evolution We've engaged in how time goes by With a stick and a rail up and so, so fly Our sun well, What's the time? This question right here have to be one of the most frequent if not the most frequent questions that we in civilization have asked at many point of our lives. From the planning of planting crops in the field to calibrating the GPS signal of satellites, we have advanced in mathematical and technological knowledge. But time has remained just the same. A little better defined is all. So how do we define time? So if we take Newtonian mechanics, then we might say that the parameter which people agree on being the same in the respective measurements of an arbitrary event is time. Relativistically, it's not that universal mm -hmm. event. We have hypothetical operators like these to show temporal evolution. And in thermodynamics, we define time to be an asymmetric quantity following that relation. So what exactly is time? Manu, we have been measuring time since the dawn of the civilization. But I wonder, how did we do it? Wait, let me explain. To match up the necessities of highly accurate timekeeping like GPS and stock exchanges, we need to adhere an extra second in the year named as leap second. But this wasn't the way our ancient flocks were. There are a number of ancient monuments found all over the earth constructed from stones to measure time. Today, these megalithic stone structures are extremely difficult to decipher. One of the crucial fingerprints of ancient era was the invention of sundial. The roots of sundials are almost 5000 years old. This sundial, which we are going to discuss in this video, was originally constructed by Egyptians using a vertical gnomon. Oh, I've heard about sundials, but I really don't know how it works. Brother, I got it covered. So, as we by now have understood what a sundial is, let's look at how it works. As we know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. This causes the shadow to move from west to east. This motion of shadow is used to tell time of the day. But that's not all. The sun's apparent position also moves between the tropics. To understand this further, let's divide Earth northern hemisphere into two parts the region north to tropic of cancer and the region between the tropic of cancer and the equator the region north to tropic of cancer we all know the fact that sun never comes overhead for people living in this part of the world this leads to sun always being towards south the sundial in Jantamanta follows the same principle as the shadow always moves northwest to northeast, this shows the time of the day. This reading is taken at Soha Oman. As the sun starts moving towards the Tropic of Cancer from the south, the shadow length decreases. Similarly, as the sun moves towards the Tropic of Capricorn, the length of the shadow increases. This change in shadow's length shows the month and the day of the year. This can be seen in following graph where shadow length of 1 meter rod is shown for every 16th day of the month in New Delhi. This can also be seen happening in areas south of Tropic of Capricorn where the effects on the shadow are reversed. The region between Tropic of Cancer and Equator As the sun's apparent position always moves between the tropics, the sun comes twice overhead also known as zero shadow day. This can be seen in the simulation where the parabola touches the x-axis twice, which denotes the event. On a zero shadow day, the sun crosses from south to north while moving towards Tropic of Cancer and north to south while moving towards the equator. This can be noticed in these two images of 15th me and 20th me, where the direction of the shadow has changed. The zero shadow day in Mumbai and Thane region occurs on 16th May. This causes the shadow length to decrease to zero on the zero shadow day and again increase shows the same thing. This change in shadow's position and length 
needs to be accounted while making unsigned dial in this region. The change of length and position of the shadow denotes change in day and month of a year. This can be similarly felt by people living between equator and rock of Capricorn. These are the locations from where we managed to get reading for the project. But when did we turn to the mechanical clocks? I wonder what difficulties the people in the past faced. That's really an interesting question. Let me share my knowledge about it. Quest for using this concept for eternity took a turn since unstandardized timing were creating logistical issue for traders. Soon, mechanical clock came into existence and deep six the concept of sundials, which further bifurcated time into 24 equal parts. Christian Huygens in around 1600 made first mechanical pendulum clock. Epiphanio quartz clock and watches in 1960s made use of piezoelectric material that converts electric charge into mechanical stress. Advent of atomic clocks redefined the concept of unit second using intrinsic property of cesium atom. In 2014, scientists developed a clock which won't lose a single second in 14 billion years, which is the current age of the universe. With this spellbounding fact, we are ending this video. Thank you.